Welcome to today's Techno Wizard show. Today we're going to be mounting the primary coil on our primary support wagon that we made last time. To do that, we're going to use 50 feet of copper wire. We've got right here. When you open up the box of copper wire, I got this for Home Depot. It's around 40 bucks. We have these little caps on the end here. This is one quarter inch copper wire. As you remember, we've been using the one quarter inch uh, drill bit to, uh, uh, to, uh, to make our holes, and that's what fits down inside here. So, in order to mount this thing, notice there's a big difference in the diameter copper comes in versus the diameter that it needs to vary as it spreads out and rests along here and then zip tie it down as well. So what we need to do is to first feed one end of the copper wire down inside through one of these holes in the flange so that we'll be able to connect it from underneath to receive the output of the capacitor. That's what's going to send the high current charge here that will pulse up the secondary and ring the coil and make the sparks. The other end will be somewhere on the outside of here and this will be what we tap to. I got here a bus fuse block which takes a quarter inch fuse and that just uh, latches right on quite nicely. Uh, I'll just have to take that screw out to get that and then then solder up a good uh, probably 8 gauge wire to it so it will handle the current. And this I'll be able to use to tune the primary coil. All right, let's figure this out here. Okay, so what we want to do is get our safety glasses on. Remember, we're going to be drilling, so safety first. Dusk mass optional, see how the dust goes. And I'm going to go ahead and see which is the innermost and outermost turn. Kind of get the coil to go that way. Now remember, you want to flex the coil as little as possible because of the work hardening. It gets tougher to move the more you bend it. So you want to try to do this right and do it once. Just going to kind of start to loosen out the coil to get my, it's going to be one quarter inch apart so the spacing will be the same as the thickness of the pipe. You may wonder why I'm not using solid copper wire. Well, at its uh, highest innermost frequencies here, um, High frequency voltage tends to have what they call the skin effect, which means it travels along the outer uh, surface. It's similar to how if lightning strikes your car, as you saw in my other video, where I'm in the Boston Museum of Science lightning cage, that um, you're perfectly fine uh, because the skin effect of the metal around your car protects you. The tires really don't do anything, but it's the metal of, of your car, the yeah, exterior shell. It's like what they call a Faraday cage. It's named for Michael Faraday, who also discovered great principles about, uh, let's see, Maxwell discovered capacitors. Well, here's a link to a wiki article all about Faraday, right here. Go ahead and check that out. Okay, now what I did is I drilled a hole through a flange. I'm looking for where I put it. Oh, there it is. What we have to do is we're going to have to bend this piece down so it'll go down through. Need enough there to uh, So I'm going from the inside, the innermost turn, and I'm working my way out. Now, as you see, 
But what I did here, that's where the main capacitor is going to hook up to. Capacitor output, which then will be in line from the spark gap and uh, all the rest of, you know, the very basic Tesla coil uh, circuits. So it's going to go ahead and keep this winding tight. Hmm, the screws will be a little bit in the way of uh, where I really want them to be. I'm going to go ahead and try to get my first innermost turn, which will actually determine what we call the coupling effect. The coupling, let me show you with that. The coupling has to do with the spacing in between your innermost turn of your primary and the outermost turn of your secondary. Well, secondary being this one vertical point here. So, let's see, let this cap off. So, as you see down in here, the coupling will be related to how far down you push that. So that's about uh, an inch and a half away. And then I can raise and lower this to also affect the coupling vertically as well as horizontally. So, let's get back to winding. Okay, let me get a closer view here. tricky. Building the coil is a lot of manual labor as you figured it out. The actual assembly of it. The end result is really cool. And smaller diameter bit. So let's see, I'm using these 7 and 7 8 zip ties here. Spot for my first anchor point here. on either side of the outer ring of the flange mount. Straight through way to do this. You know, I should probably not have that uh, there just yet in the board, but there it is. I'm going to have to go on even bigger drill bits, but that's okay. Let's just get this one in here first. Thirteen sixty fourth perfect for a particular zip tie. All right, get a good round through here. There 
are other ways to do this. I have seen plexiglass just cut and assembled. Well, cut in little notches. Plexiglass stood up just vertically around. And it would just drop it in. It's probably an easier way to do it than what I'm doing. But I'm doing what I'm doing here. Okay, I'll trim the excess later. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Cool. Okay, next mount point's over here. And I'm going to go around and around doing drilling and mount point, drilling and mount point. So that'll take a while. Um, so, catch you up when that's done. Actually, something I figured out is going to make this a lot easier. So if I just kind of hand form the coils to flay this thing out flat across the entire uh, diameter all around. Then, strap it down afterwards. So, let's get a finesse it a little. Remember, keep it about a quarter inch spacing. And, so the spacing between your coils just has to be about the same diameter as the pipe. Just coil this right up around itself here. This pipe is nice and relatively easy to bend. All it is just a thin hollow tube of copper. Did you know on the periodic table of the elements that if you go vertically down from copper, the next one down is silver, and below that is gold. So copper was one of the earliest forms of precious metal. And as man learned to work with metal, moved on to more advanced elements. And there was a copper age, the bronze age, and so forth. We're creating a rather large diameter here. I may end up using some pliers as I get closer to the uh, the fine tuning part. First, I gotta get this bundle down into a single layer. update on what I had to do here. started with the outside actually. See, I undo the inner winding. And because this was all kind of coiled up like a bunch of damn Christmas tree lights, I had to get this into a straight, long spiral. And that's the end down there. So, with that, now I can wind from the outside in. And that is what I'm going to do. Here's a little update. I got about three turns in. As you get your turns, you want to make sure that the wires are not touching. It's where you need to go in with some pliers and, you know, bend one end, 
a little bit further closer to the others and whatnot. And, you know, just kind of fine tune as you go. With the spacing, you know, as close to even as you can. This one's a little further down. There we go. But be careful with your pliers that you don't mark up your coil. You want it to be nice and smooth so that it, the uh, there's no leakage of electricity off of the sharp edges. All right, a little rat's nest of uh, wires straightened out, and it continues. Okay, well, here's where I've gotten so far with that 50 feet. Uh, I went ahead and mounted it. As you can see, this is really hard to get. It's spaced correctly. It's getting a bit stiff there, but I did what I could. See with the zip ties here, just mounting it along the axis. And going from the outside in, I think, really is the best way to go. But you got to know how much material you have to work with. So I was mentioning earlier with the coupling, well, that's quite a gap between here and here. Fortunately, I have that extra 25 feet from the other week. So what I can do is I can splice in I can splice the two ends of the wire together here, you see, and uh, yeah, I can continue on around such that I will have 75 feet of copper wire for my primary coil. Until next time, thank you for watching a Techno Wizard program, and have fun.